Uh, hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Daily Crypto News. And yes guys, we are still giving away 500 XRP, the first video that we hit a thousand likes within 24 hours. If you want to enter, all you have to do is make sure you press the like button, make sure you are subscribed, and make sure you comment something down below. If you've done that, you're automatically entered, and you'll hear if you want tomorrow, so uh, stay tuned and watch these videos, guys. <laughs> so without further ado, let's get into the content. Ripple XRP looks ready to rip higher. Whenever I see articles like this, at first I'm kind of excited, right? Because basically people writing positive price articles for XRP is almost always a nice thing, right? For, for your own faith in the currency, you're like, well, I like that. The only problem that comes with this, uh, by the way, is that it's not like every article is like useful or anything like that. Here we can see Ripple price analysis, huge expected move as XRP reaching Triangle's apex. This, on the other hand, I'm like, man, it's not that positive. Right? This one, I'm like, it's really positive. This one, I'm like, man. Reason is right here, we're saying, all right, we're looking at something in the future for XRP and it's looking positive, which keeps kind of a neutral stance and informs people about the situation. Right? I didn't read the article because you have to register. It's free, but I, I don't want to. And in the end, though, it kind of looks like a neutral article where it's just explaining exactly the price, uh, you know, exactly what it's doing, right? Here, I don't know, it sounds a little bit different because they're saying huge move expected. And here they're like, it looks ready to rip higher. But look, there's a core difference, and I hope you guys can see it off the bat. But I think it's really important for all of you that are, you know, reading these price analysis articles because you're really getting a completely different message. The message here is, all right, Something happened in the market. XRP is following a long-term descending resistance line. There is support and resistance near 2450 and 3200 Satoshi. XRP is trading inside a descending wedge. And thus, from here on forward, it's looking like we're going up. Here they're saying, all right, we're reaching a triangle apex. We're going to have a huge move. The difference is right here, they're already kind of, kind of hyping people up that something big is going to happen, even though uh, there's a 90% chance that it won't do that. Here they're just saying that the chance of going up is higher than the chance of going down. You know, that there's a good chance that it's going up. You see the difference here? There's a core difference, a very big one, and I and I will always support these articles more because they're more informative and less hypey and all that type of stuff. And it's really something I despise within XRP, but I'm also a little bit guilty of myself. You know, as a lot of you core, core supporters and people who watch my videos more often know, I'm not going to give you guys some stupid price prediction myself, right? If there's a price prediction in the title, it's because somebody said it or we gave a good basis upon that prediction. It's not just some miscellaneous number that I've taken out of the air like some guys do. I always give, always give you either facts or something which I think is reasonable or built upon by something else. But I always tell you guys exactly my opinion. No lies, full transparency, because that's what I believe in. That's my mission. Right? I'm not here to <laughs> cheat anybody. Because as I've said before, I don't care if you buy or sell XRP. It's not benefiting me at all. And I'm not sponsored by them, so really, I could care a lot less. Uh, or I, could, I guess I could care more, literally speaking. But that's the saying, right? I could care less. I couldn't care less. I don't know, whatever. I, I think you, you get the gist of what I'm trying to say. Now, having that said, though, or having said that, there's so many guys right now which, which put out such fake content or fake predictions or fake hypey stuff, which actually coincides with one of the... Let's see here. It's actually this side... One of the things I showed you guys before, like this this Mr. Pool type of stuff, even though Mr. Pool here and, and Ripple Riddlers in that sense might not even claim some crazy prices, they still hype people up for something completely false, for some crazy idea, and it just gets them into a wrong section of, of crypto investors, where people like hopium investors, where people are like, well, something big might happen soon, uh -huh. And they get too happy with something that will most likely not happen. Also, they might think and believe in insiders, which I personally really, really despise as well. And in the end, you just might make them too happy with something that won't happen. And, and, and I'm calling right now for people that really believe in this type of stuff. Maybe it's you, right? Maybe you like these hypey articles. It could be. I'm just telling you guys to watch out with them and take them with a grain of salt and don't believe something is going to happen because these guys tell you so. Nine out of ten times... They don't even know how to trade that well. They're just analyzing something for a couple of seconds. They're like, hey, let me slap this into an article to make some money or some exposure. And that's basically it. They might not even have that crazy stuff. All right. Having said that, having, having done or been done now with a little bit of my complaints, let's get into some real stuff. Stimulus update. 
White House reaches out to Pelosi to restart negotiations on checks and unemployment benefits. One of the biggest things of this year by far is the new unemployment bill that's coming out for the U.S., or at least the enhanced unemployment benefits and the big discussion that's going on. Now, we're all talking about the $600 or $300 enhanced unemployment benefit, exactly what it's going to be, how much money is going to be costing, and how it's going to be affecting us all. Because as I've said before, I think XRP will come out as a winner from whatever stimulus they can throw at people. But the people themselves, which are the U.S. citizens, I'm not one of them, but whatever. Yeah, they will come out very, very far worse as their, their currency just really gets devalued by all this, this money that gets pumped in. So even though it might look like a, a good thing where you're getting some unemployment benefit, you're getting some money. In the end, they're kind of ruining it for everybody ruining it for everybody. And that's also why a lot of these bigger players right now are hopping out of the US dollar or are hopping into safe havens. We've seen that with a lot of bigger companies. I have reported on that last couple of weeks. So just take my word for it this time here. <laughs> just told you that you shouldn't take people's word and then I'm asking you for, uh, and then I'm asking you to trust me. I'm a, I'm a hypocrite, I know. Yeah, or, or don't trust me, who cares? <laughs> yeah, you choose yourself. Let me try update tonight. The point is though, I'm just getting more and more concerned with exactly what they're trying to go for here. All right? And I'm also more and more concerned about what exactly is the best thing to invest in and what I should tell my own people to go for. Like, is S&P 500 that safe right now? Well, to a certain degree, yes. Because, I mean, if we're talking about a period of 30 years, it's going to be fine. On the contrary, though, that is always with the, the fact that U.S. is the number one economy. The U.S. Is, a, is an established economy which has always prospered, right, for at least the last 100 years. It has, always, it has also been the world currency for the last 100 years. And the S&P 500, I mean, when did they change from 90 to 500? Maybe 1950 or something, 1957, maybe 1950, maybe 60, 1957, I think. Something along those lines, 1956 maybe. They changed to like 100 stocks instead of only 90. And all of that is just in a very prospering time. Maybe not in terms of, you know, completely economic. It, may, it could have been a recession in the mean. But the, the problem is, U.S. has always been, for this time, number one and the fact that through all of this they could really get themselves to the second position and i'm talking the second position because there's a lot of big stuff going over in china guys a fintech ipo could be the biggest ever and it picked china over the u.s for its debut the reason for that is i think a lot of these bigger companies right now don't want to be established in in the u.s even though for example alibaba did do their ipo in the u.s at the new york stock exchange because for the longest time it looked like the best spot to do it really understandably though i can really understand why now a lot of them are looking into china a lot of them want to stay in china because first of all they're supporting china for this big technological warfare that's going around but also there might be trade restrictions coming up bigger ones there might be trade restrictions uh that, that get even more established right there might be some bigger debate going on it might unfold even further it might even be that you know, I guess the U.S. is going to lead for there and all that. The Chinese, most likely, this is just an assumption. I don't have inside info. They want to help their own country by staying on top of this game, by having people from the U.S. put money into China instead of, theoretically speaking, people taking over money to the New York Stock Exchange to fund it, right? And they want to take it all over into China to those uh, exchanges over there. And even though I think it's a, it's kind of a good thing, it's also kind of a bad thing. The good part about it is, you know, these things which are, you know, China-based are doing it over in China, which means, you know, it's a little bit more difficult to send your money to China than to support that company. On the contrary, you're taking away some activity from an exchange in the U.S., which is then again bad for, for business. Also, you know, all the money is going into China right now. And maybe if they did an IPO in New York, they would also have an office in New York, maybe another venture in New York, which might put in money for, you know, for the government there in that little part. And yeah, the, the majority is like they just choose chose a different exchange right now, which is bad. And um, yeah, that's, that's basically it. Uh, another fun part about it is it's a fintech IPO, right? It's actually, I don't know the name, Ant from Alibaba. Um, and it's the biggest IPO to date, most likely. The company will issue at least 10% in new shares in the IPO, which Bloomberg estimates will raise close to $30 billion, <clears throat> which is uh, it's a lot of money. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a lot of money to to raise and then i saw a tweet from andy west i don't know if it's a joke <laughs> i don't know if it's real but I, I think it's something that a lot of people might be wondering about right and, and you before reading the comments and reading everything 
Right now, it's 27.7 per 1,000 XRP, or at least per XRP. Right here, it's 2132, right? What's the difference here? Why is it 27.7 here? Why is it 21.3 here? Why is there a different XRP price? Here he's trying to buy 1,000 XRP, it costs him 277. Here he's trying to buy 1,000 XRP, it costs him 221. Why is Coinbase this much cheaper than Binance, right? Well, because right here, the price is in USDT. Even though he might be doing everything in, in, in pounds or pens, which you can see right here, this part is all in USDT. And here he just has everything in pens or pounds, which is why the correct number shows. But even if you check it out right here, you can see 221. And right here, you can see still 221. So in the end, it will be the same thing. But I can understand the confusion, and I think a lot of people might be um, having at least a little bit of this confusion as well. And if I can clear it up to them, you know, I <laughs> might as well do that. So and that's what this video is for here, to give you guys just a little bit of a, another tip to watch out for those types of things. And also, guys, don't get scammed. Don't fall for any of the bigger giveaways and all that. And, you know, if you can help anybody out with trading, help them out. If you can help anybody out who has a question over on Twitter, help them out. He says he's a newbie. I don't know if he really is or if he's joking around, but you know, if he, if he can have any, you know, if I can help him out by saying something like that, I'll always try to. And that's why I always recommend people to just tweet at me or no, actually better go into discord and just ask a question. I mostly reply or if you just ask a question in the main chat room, there's a, there's an 85% chance of just reply to your question. Cause I try to, all right. I think it's a community type of thing. The only problem is there's not enough people in discord where I'm like, it's only a question every, you know, once every week where I'm like, man, I, I you know, I'm not that active anymore. But if you guys just come in and talk more, I also have more questions to answer. And I could just help you guys out if you ever need any help. Because again, that's a part of why I'm here, you know, to help people out because I like to do that. If I didn't like to do it, I would never be on YouTube. I told you guys before, the profit from making these videos ain't worth it. It's really not worth the time and effort that you put into making these. It takes hours upon hours every day. But it's a lot of fun. And I think it's for a future goal, right? We're all in this crypto stuff together and you know, having an outlet is just something that is really soothing to a certain degree. I could just talk about some crypto that I love and that I think is the future. It's really, really nice to a certain degree. But guys, thank you all for watching these videos. Hopefully you all enjoyed them. I really appreciate all the support. I appreciate all the likes. I appreciate all the comments. I really do appreciate you guys. Just want to let you guys know. But I see you guys again in another crypto video. Take care and have a very, very nice day.